Hey guys, I had a dream this morning about Dallas that I want to share. So I feel like this is significant and it's timely. So uh, it is the 6th here in New Zealand, 6th of September 2024, and it was the 5th in the US when I had this dream. So I was sitting with the Lord in the heavens or the skies above overlooking the USA. And I heard the Lord speak and say firmly, but not with any anger, just a statement like it was a time stamp and a response to prayers. Your verdict has opened in Dallas. And I saw the land from high above America and Dallas was dry and cracked like it had not rained there in a very long time. The cracks were deep, deep crevices. I didn't see any houses or people, only the land. And it reminded me of a dry and thirsty land, a dry and weary land. I watched as the Lord opened this book and sent it hurtling towards the ground with an almighty wind that I knew was Holy Spirit. It landed open on the dirt with half the pages on one side and half the pages on the other. It was open smack bang in the middle to the heart of the book. This may be a reference to Dallas being reminded of the heart of the word of God, but also the Lord is looking at hearts right now. The pages were blank and I felt the peace of Holy Spirit calm and comforting as I sat and looked over this book and over the land of Dallas. It felt as though there was about to be the judgment of God written in Dallas, Texas, but it indicated a simultaneous response to a much needed outpouring of the Spirit of God because the Lord's focus was on the dryness of the land and correcting that. Now, I don't know what Dallas looks like. I've never seen a picture of Dallas, so um, this is just what I saw in the dream. I felt his heart for the people in this land and his mercy. He was coming with the book because of his great love, not out of wrath. Psalm 63, 1 says, A psalm of David, when he was in the wilderness of Judah, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Now dry, the word here in Hebrew is tsia. Barren, drought, dry land, solitary place, wilderness, desert, dry places. It is interesting to note that you'd usually say a case is opened and a verdict closes a case. However, the Lord here said it the other way around, the verdict has opened. This indicates to me that there may be previous verdicts, court cases, legislation enacted, or works of the enemy that have looked final, but God. He has opened the verdict to bring justice and true righteous and godly judgment from the heavens. I opened Google after I woke up to search Dallas, and the first thing that popped up was a fire from one hour before that time. The second headline after clicking on Dallas News was from three hours before, and this was the headline. A contract signed in 1972 has Dallas paying $500,000 to lease a property that makes 50k. So it was like 450k gone for nothing, and it doesn't make any logical sense. It said, Council Member Chad West, who chairs the Government, Performance and Financial Management Committee, flagged the issue during budget discussions. And I thought about it, 2024 is where we're at right now, 1972 is when this was enacted. 52 years has passed. And I immediately thought 50 years is a jubilee year. This is outside. So this, this piece of, this contract has been going for 52 years. That's longer than the normal 50 ju jubilee years. So I thought about it and this is outside of the biblical Old Testament ways and doings of the clearing of debts after 50 years in Jubilee years. This is two years overdue. Um, I also looked at um, the middle of a book and I found that you can write a book that starts in the middle, a narrative technique known as in medias res. It involves plunging readers into the story's heart, creating immediate intrigue. This technique can captivate captivate attention and spark curiosity, making it a powerful tool. I also found an open book is something that is widely and fully known, a thing completely free from mystery or concealment. And I really felt that this may show that it may be that the people of Dallas are well aware of this lack and dryness, the spiritual dryness, I mean, 
and may have been crying out to the Lord, praying for rain and an outpouring. And I believe he is answering. The word Jubilee, literally the blast of a horn in Hebrew, is defined in Leviticus 25 verse 9 as the sabbatical year after seven cycles of seven years, so 49 years. The 50th year was to be a time of celebration and rejoicing for the Israelites. The ram's horn was blown on the 10th day of the seventh month to start the 50th year of universal redemption. The year of the Jubilee involved a year of release from indebtedness. So that's in Leviticus 25 verse 23 to 38. And all types of bondage. So verses 39 to 55. I'm not going to read all of that. All prisoners and captives were set free. All slaves were released. All debts were forgiven and all property was returned to its original owners. In addition, all labor was to cease for one year and those bound by labor contracts were released from them. One of the benefits of the Jubilee was that both the land and the people were able to rest. I believe the land looking so dry and cracked represents overuse and out of godly order. There has been no rest when needed. It may indicate a lack of rest by those in leadership or oversight of the land and pastures or congregations, which is a risk to the body. Our leaders must rest for what is to come. They must wash in the word daily. The number 50 appears to be highlighted in this and throughout. And I believe it's important here. In, 50, uh, in Hebrew, 50 is kamishim. And in Leviticus 25 verse 10, it says, And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. And I feel like that's what I'm meant to do here. I declare liberty throughout the land of Dallas and to all its inhabitants. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It shall be a jubilee year for you. And each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. A key word in this verse is the Hebrew word for liberty, which is deror. It means freedom. Another example from the New Testament is found in the Gospels. And we all know the story where Yeshua fed the 5,000. And 5,000 is 100 times 50. So there's multiplication involved. He had the 5,000 people sit down in groups of 50. Because of this, there is obviously an emphasis on the number 50. One of the theological points which this passage teaches is that when one acts in faith, he is not bound by the things of this world. Rather, he is free or liberated to serve the Lord. And 10 times 5 is 50. And I had this dream on the 5th. Number 5, obviously in Hebrew, means grace. And his grace is always sufficient. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11 says, For as the rain comes down in the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, and it shall not return void to me, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. As always, weigh this, test it against the word of God. I only see in part, and I'm sharing for those in Dallas who can pray and stand for justice. And if you are in, in Dallas, keep praying for rain. Pray for rain in the time of rain. God is merciful. Get in the word. Rest in the Lord. Get in the secret place. Thank the Lord for what he has done in the past, what he is doing now, and what he will do in the future. And I declare grace, grace to Dallas. Away rivers in the wilderness, streams in the desert. Dry bones become a wellspring of life in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. You are a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Bless you guys, and I will see you again soon.